hydrant has been around for a long time. It's usually quite expensive. Why are you doing this now? What changed? Good morning, Alex. You know, what's changed is that uh, we have a lot more renewables on the grid now than we did, say, 10 or 15 years ago when people started talking about hydrogen. And with a lot more renewable power on the grid, what's that, what that's creating is a need for storage. We need to be able to store a renewable power when it's in excess so that we can use it when we're short. What just happened two weekends ago in California is really a great example of um, why we need storage on, on power grids that have uh, installed a lot of renewable power. But hydrogen's still expensive. Uh, the infrastructure's not there. What needs to happen to make hydrogen fulfill the opportunity that many people feel that it now has? Europe's pushing ahead pretty strongly. Where's the United States? It's a great question. You know, the, the, the difficult challenge with hydrogen is solving the, the problem of how do we get started? And we, ha we have a project in, in Utah that we previously announced where we, we had the good fortune of having a, a hydrogen power plant right on top of a salt dome where we could produce and store hydrogen. But these three projects that we announced today are in um, unregulated markets. These are independent power producers in the eastern United States where there's not a ready source of hydrogen nearby. And so what we're announcing is we're making these power plants hydrogen ready. So on day one, they're gonna use natural gas as their fuel, but they are gonna be ready for hydrogen when the, the grid needs storage and when we build out the underground uh, infrastructure we're gonna to need to deliver hydrogen to these power plants. So it's sort of solving the chicken and egg problem. You know, you're, you're not gonna in invest in the underground infrastructure until there are power plants who need hydrogen and you're not gonna build power plants that need hydrogen until you've got that underground infrastructure. So what we're doing is making these power plants hydrogen ready. They're gonna be able to use hydrogen on site, uh, stored on site, a, a smaller amount of hydrogen, which is going to dramatically improve the flexibility of these power plants and create value that way, but make them ready for the future uh, when the power grids in Ohio, New York, and Virginia need a massive amount of stored uh, renewable power. Uh, when does that happen? Like when do you get to 100% uh, hydrogen? Can you give me some timings? You know, it's gonna change depending on what uh, power grid you're in. So for example, in California, California needs stored power now, mm -hmm. which is why our project in Utah, right at commercial operation is gonna be capable of using 30% um, hydrogen. But um, in, in, in Ohio, or New, the state of New York will probably come pretty soon because they're you know, very aggressive in, in putting new reno renewables on their grid. Virginia is gonna install a lot of offshore wind in the coming years, and so that's gonna create their need for stored re renewables. And then Ohio might come after Virginia. So you know, the, the, the answer to your question is it depends, but you know, in general, this is all gonna happen over the next decade. Hmm. Where does the lead come from? Um, in terms of the sectors that are going to be utilising hydrogen. Um, transportation is obviously something that is often talked about, but hasn't really taken off yet. But if you take a look at what's happening in the trucking market, that certainly looks like an opportunity for hydrogen's usage to a far greater degree. Are you going to piggyback off them or are they going to piggyback off you? That's a great question. The, the answer is they're going to piggyback off us. It's actually easier to do this first in power. And that's why we're moving fast with these multi-billion dollar projects because it, we can make it make sense right now in power. But um, as we connect the, if this underground infrastructure, we're gonna use rights of way along highways to connect these um, with pipelines that are gonna move hydrogen, renewable hydrogen underground. And so as we build those along uh, uh, highways, then we're gonna be able to tap into that for a massive amount of very affordable green hydrogen that'll be available for transportation and also for industrial uses. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're not going to be able to electrify as we move forward into the future. And, uh, and so hydrogen is going to play that role of, of uh, decarbonizing things that are hard to electrify. So on that point, um, how are you going to be selling the power? Is it going to be sort of short-term contracts, in which case you have to really compete in the market? Or do you think you're going to have success and with what kind of pricing for longer-term contracts? It, you know, and again, it depends. In, in, um, in our project in Utah, um, we're going to be signing a long-term gas supply agreement uh, with the, the user of the hydrogen fuel and, and then they're a utility, it's uh, Intermountain Power, they're, they have, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to sell it through their utility network. These projects we announced today that are in the eastern United States, these are in competitive markets where uh, they, they uh, compete in a capacity auction like in PJM or New York ISO. 
Um, they get, and then they get a capacity payment, and then on top of that, they get energy payments. Uh, and th that combination of capacity and energy payment is, is where they get their revenues.